Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's make a start. We've got a fair bit to crack through on this one. So I'm in the shading tab. I have an object loaded and a principal shader applied to it. I will enable viewport shading. I've got the cycles render engine selected. Uh, I'm gonna choose denoising. Yep, okay. So first things first, noise texture. We start a lot of uh, materials with a noise texture. It's very useful. Make sure that you've got a mapping node and texture coordinate uh, applied to that. Shift A, obviously, and then search for any of these three or Shift A, search for the noise texture and then Control T if you've got the node Wrangler add-on enabled to apply those to that texture. Plug that into the base color. And change the scale to 15, detail to 10, roughness to 0.65, and leave the distortion alone. We are going to need a second noise texture, so I'll press Shift D while that's selected to get my second one. And I'm going to need a few uh, color ramps actually in here to control a few different things. So Shift A color ramp. I need one up here somewhere. Shift D, I definitely need one down here. In fact, I need three down here. Okay. Now, I need a mix RGB up here. Second one here. And a third and fourth one here. Now nothing's happening because I'm not connecting any of these up yet. So uh, let's start doing that. Now for this noise texture, we're gonna take the factor from that into the factor of this mix shader. Uh, on this color ramp, we are going to change the colors and I need to plug the factor into the factor from the noise texture. I do also need to change their positioning, so let's do everything all at once. Let's say 0.3 for the position, and then we need a sort of dark brown. So let's bring the value up to 0 0.05, saturation 0.85, and... Hmm, 0 0.05 for the hue, maybe go up a bit on the saturation and down even further on the value. Point zero two five. Uh, let's grab the hex code from that and use that to create the base color for this, but we need to change the hue a bit and the value. Basically want, hmm, an orange. There, that one, 0 0.051 and 
just going to drag this off a little bit, let's say 0.9, change the interpolation mode to ease. Now we're going to plug the color from this into color one on this mix shader. We're going to take the color from this mix shader into color two. And then that is going to get plugged into color one on this mix shader. And then we're going to take the color output from that and put that into our base color. Now that's totally changed what we had there now, but that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, now on the first mix shader, I am going to increase the value all the way to white and I'm going to leave that where it was. Now we can bring these color ramps up and start plugging those in. All three of these, we're going to take the factor from this bottom noise texture, which I should have plugged the vector in already, uh, and plug those into the factors of the color ramp. This top color ramp, we're going to take the color from that and use it as the factor in this mix shader. We're going to change the interpolation mode to constant and move the white value to position 0.45 and you can see what's happening to that as I change these values. I'm going to change this mix in a minute but first let's find its other color and it will be this color ramp here. Pop that in there. Now for this one, for this color ramp, I'm zooming right in because I need to show you very much what I need to do. We're going to add a third color point. We're going to position the black at 0.445. Change the interpolation mode to ease. Change the color on that first one all the way to white. And just double check the third color is white as well. It is. So this was 0.445. The position on this is going to be 0 0.445. Okay. Maybe 0.5, nope, that's too far away, 0.46, which means, oops, which means this one, let's put at 0.425, okay, let me zoom in a bit so you can see what's happening. It's basically putting a very, very dark fine line around the edges, which will help with the illusion of what we're trying to achieve in a while. I'm going to change the factor here to 0.75, just to tone that down a bit. And then for this mix shader here, I'm going to plug that into the roughness and for the factor, I'm going to take that from this color ramp. And basically, I'm just going to change these colors to black and white. White on the top, black on the bottom. And as you can see, that's basically given us the shiny bits on where we want the paint and rough bits on where it's peeling. Now to add a bit of bump, grab a bump node, plug that into the normal of the principal shader, take the color from the bottom color ramp, plug that into the height, 
and on the color ramp add a third color which will be a gray drag that off to the right set the white at 0.5 and 0.5 the gray at 0.525 And the black we're going to push into 0.475. So if I zoom in a bit, zoom in a bit closer, you can see we've got all the different textures going on now. Uh, we're going to leave that as one and one. We are going to increase. Oh no, we'll leave the specular at 0.5. I'll drop the specular tint, but you can obviously play everything else we're leaving as it is. I think oh actually let me just check the noise texture at the bottom uh, okay so the scale on this one is going to be 3 detail 5 roughness 0.75 and I think we're leaving the distortion as it is right let's check because I should have some color coming through, but it's not, so why not? One moment, please. Okay, I think it might be because this mixed shader here that's going into the base color needs to be multiply. There you go, you see? Ta -da. Now, something's not quite right because those or, uh, bumpy bits should be closer to the edge let's take a look at this I think this needs the white needs to be 0 0.45 Black at point four. Oops. Sorry. And the grey at point five. So you can see it's now just slightly rough around the edges, and it looks like it's starting to peel. So let's give you a better idea of what's going on where. So the color ramp up the top is creating the rust texture. That's being mixed in with the white, which is set by the constant uh, color ramp. And that's why we bring the white in here. If you change that, obviously you get more or less. Uh, the color ramp down here is giving us that outline and that's why we've crunched it, crunched those colors together just to give us those very, very fine lines around the edge. And then the final color ramp is giving us our uh, texture for the bump node. So there you go. So this one texture is controlling all three of those. And this texture is controlling the rust. And so I'll send that to render. I'm using a thousand samples and obviously the cycles render engine, as I've mentioned, and let's see what we get. And hey, presto, there we have our material where we've got the sort of shiny, glossy paint, but it's starting to rust and peel and chip away. I hope you found that useful and will give the video a thumbs up and of course subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching.